Hiya, I'm Hannah. You're welcome to my allotment again for this week's vlog. So, what have I been up to this week? Let's find out. Gosh, it's such a lovely evening. There's been so many of these evenings this week. Completely still and just so sunny. It's getting cooler now, pretty quick. And the nights are still cold and we've had several frosts overnight this week even though they were promising we wouldn't <laughs> so i don't know if i'm in some sort of frost pocket here very very possible but the daytime temperatures have been good this week to the point where you don't really know what to wear right but um it's definitely definitely spring and you can feel it in the greenhouse right it's ah, the sun is really warming it's a difficult time though in the greenhouse because see, some of the seedlings don't like to be super hot during the day and then super cold <laughs> during the night time. It's not really that temperature extreme is very difficult. I'm lucky as in I can get down here and open the, the doors before uh, doing any work or things like that. But I guess if you're living further away from your allotment then it can be a bit tricky ventilating so i guess then you would grow more seedlings at home but i'm able to move most of my seedlings down here as soon as they've germinated so that's good but yeah so um it was time to sow more seeds uh <laughs> i i have a lot of flower seeds to grow from this year so i had to get on sowing them so i've done my zinnias i've done my straw flowers and the sunflowers you saw in the last vlog and they've, they're all coming up now, which is great. Actually, I'll get them. So this is where they are. So I went for module sewing, right? So I'm gonna have to pop these out pretty quick. Because I noticed the roots are already coming out. So I've got um, pots ready for that and I'll have to thin them because I can't keep them all. The other option is that you plant them out straight away because uh, they could potentially survive and if they do survive they would probably be more sturdy and have more developed root system and be more stable than if you pot them on, pot them on, pot them on. Um, but, but then again I'm not the best at growing sunflowers. The best success I have is when I direct so, so there you go. Which I will do as well. But yeah, the, the zinnias have started coming up actually, so that's good because I was a bit worried. They are warm loving plants and it has been getting a bit chilly overnight, as I said, so in here. Um, but they are here and uh, yeah, that's good. So I did speak last vlog about my fungus net problem. And yeah, it's uh, they're still around after my treatment of using the nematodes. Um, but I, I do see a reduction and I don't, I don't see any live ones in the compost that I've treated, so that's good. Though I'm not able to water enough, to, you have to keep the compost wet so that the parasites that are the nematodes can live and breed and attack any new eggs that are laid over a period of time. Um, and I've not been able to do that because I'm so scared of overwatering. you know, I'm growing loofahs and cucumbers and things like that and they really don't want to be over water. Same with chilies and things, you know, they don't want to sit in water because then they just get edema, just like little uh, crystals on the, on the leaves. Basically, they can't take up all that water that you're giving it. So I don't want to. I don't want to do that either. So this is a very tricky situation. But yes, long story. What my point was that I have been trying to germinate as much as possible inside the greenhouse rather than in the house, and the warm days have um, helped with that. So the neighbor's cat is here. Hey, Elby. He doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be in. Let's see if I can turn you around. Elby! No. Right, where was I? Yes, so I've been trying to germinate as much as possible inside the greenhouse and it has been working. Uh, the seniors have come, so it is it is working. I'm a bit worried about the straw flowers, no action yet. So um, we'll see. Oh, here's the other. 
Here's um meow. <laughs> All the neighbors cats are here apparently. I didn't realize they come here at night. I don't know where my cat is. Um but that's great. Please catch all the moles. <laughs> and all the rats and all the mice and everything. They keep eating everything, yeah, digging holes everywhere. Anyway, yes, sorry, I'm a bit very distracted today. But yes, I did sow most of the flower seeds that were due to be sown now in April and then I'm I'm still direct sowing everything else. Uh, probably end of April at the earliest, because yeah, I don't want to risk them just not germinating because it's too cold, right? And uh, it's so dry and I feel like if I direct so anything now, I'm just going to spend my time watering it and that's just not that's just not my thing, is it? Um, so that's not going to happen. But I did manage to, with the aid of my allotment helper, to plant out lots of the rejects, the big plants from the garden, including um, a bay tree and um, yeah, I'm a little bit worried that that's gonna be um, become a massive nuisance at some point. We'll see how it survives. But also a rose, uh, some euphorbia, some bulbs of I don't know what, uh, something we inherited from um, my partner's grandmother. Things like that. You know, random little bits that don't fit in our garden anymore. They've come out to the allotment. So that was a bit of a job and um, I'm not sure they're all gonna survive because as I said, it's so dry and just watering, it's just not possible. I'm depleting my rainwater supply very, very quickly and it's just, um, it's, it's not very sustainable. Uh, and I do prioritize my vegetables instead. So funnily enough, after I'd sowed all my flowers, I put the trays in water, right? To be water from below usually. And um, I left my seed store open on the floor in the greenhouse and then I stepped over the whole thing and I managed to tip the water tray into my seed storage, which was not great. Thankfully, it was still sunny and warm. So this was like late afternoon, but I managed to get all the seed packets out on the grass outside the greenhouse and try to dry them off as well as the actual seed storage my god i can't believe i was so stupid like it all went to the bottom of it so yeah i'm a bit worried that they're all gonna germinate all the seeds have got wet uh so especially the ones that are in like paper paper packets you know the ones in plastic obviously fine um but yeah i'm a little bit worried so that was really 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 stupid so don't do that definitely don't do that uh, I did also manage to sew my basil. I think this was during this, yeah, it was when I was sewing the basil that this happened. So this year I'm going pure perlite on my basil and um, it is pretty cool with basil because you, you, um, you get the seeds wet and you can see it on them that they're wet, like because they, they, the outer layer becomes see-through and it looks like, um, like a jelly, you know? and um, you know that they will then probably germinate as long as you can keep them moist like that. So I like to just put them in pure perlite and um, keep them warm, put them on a radiator or something like that, or like an agar if you have that, I don't. Uh, and that will make them germinate really, really quickly. And they've, they're already up actually, they're inside the house and I'm gonna have to prick them out sometime soon. They are the cutest seedlings and I'm growing four varieties this year. So it's lemon, cinnamon, Greek and the normal sweet basil. So that's going to be great. And actually the cinnamon and the lemon was it? No, the cinnamon and the Greek basil looks like they have a purple stems, which is interesting. I didn't know that. The other thing I got sewing, there's a lot of sewing, still a lot of sewing and we haven't even gone into May yet, is all the sweet corn. I'm growing four varieties, which of which one is the glass gem corn, which is for popping, which is that multicolored, beautiful corn that is just so gorgeous and it's got the best um, story behind it, how it was created. Uh, so definitely have a Google on glass gem corn if you wonder what that looks like. And uh, I grew it last year and it was an investment. It, it took me until November to harvest it but it was worth it. Um, but then the other three are sweet corns for eating fresh. 
So one is Tremont, which is a very, very sweet one, uh, a late variety that I grew last year and it was gorgeous, but I wanted to extend the season. So I've gone for uh, one that's called Double Red and which one? And another one I call Bicolor. So Bicolor has got white and yellow corn on the cob and the, red, the Double Red is obviously red. So I did find out through Instagram, posting about it on Instagram, someone who grew them before me said the double red is not very sweet. So that's disappointing, but maybe I could have guessed it, it was more, it was maybe more flashy than substance. Um, but I'll give it a go and we'll see how we get on. And the seeds, wow, they're so red. I didn't, I for some reason didn't expect that. And the bicolor obviously have two types of colored corn, but that one apparently is pretty good. So I'm hoping for good sweet corn. My toddler absolutely loves sweet corn, just eating off the cob, so that's great. But yes, yeah, so I know some people like to soak their sweet corn seeds in paper towel before they plant them. I don't, that's not necessary at all. Why people struggle germinating sweet corn is because corn is from a warm climate area and trying to germinate them in, in cold or cool compost that's too wet is just not gonna work, they're just gonna rot. So, in fact, sweet corn rots in soil that's below 18 degrees Celsius. So, very important for sweet corn is to germinate it inside your house if you are starting this early. I had great success previously sowing direct, but you have to wait until the the soil has warmed up, which happens uh, sometime after your last frost date. You can have really strong plants that way. So when you when I sow my sweet corn, I always put two corn in per module. And the same thing when I sow direct, I put two seeds in per growing place and then I thin them if I get two to germinate. And usually I do get two germinating. So um, let's see. Well, here they are. You can see them starting to pop up. And um, yeah, I'd also have some chard come up. <laughs> Don't want to drop it. There's some chard coming up here as well. But yeah, these little, little bits here, they're uh, corn starting to come up. And these are also in tiny modules, just like um, the sunflowers. So they're gonna have to move at some point. And um, yeah, we'll see how they get on, how, see how quickly they grow. Yeah, the roots already starting to come out the bottom, <laughs> so can't wait too long with this one. And while I have your attention, if you're enjoying this video or if you're finding it useful, could you give this a thumbs up? Because it really helps me know when I've done something good. Right, let's get back to the video. And in my last vlog, I talked about moving the tomatoes out to the greenhouse, right? Because we were sort of getting to the end of the cold, cold nights. So I did pot them on into their big big boy pots. <laughs> no, they're medium sized pots. And um, I made them a little bubble wrap house inside my greenhouse. And they were fine. They were fine overnight. It was uh, quite good actually. The bubble wrap made a difference of 5.2 degrees actually. So it was, I think it was minus 0.5 in the greenhouse, but it only went down to now I can't remember, but you'll see in the images that I'm gonna insert here. And uh, so they survived the cold night, but then I think because they were had um, dew on them, the leaves, they got really bad sun scorch. And that was so stupid. I can't believe I was so stupid. And um, because last year I had my shade net on my little greenhouse. And that's what I should have done this year. I shouldn't have just put them out just in a straight sunlight when it was such a scorcher of a day. And um, yeah, I'm so stupid. I still haven't, I haven't managed to film them because I basically chopped off all the damaged leaves. Uh, I don't know if that was the right thing to do, but it felt like they were gone all, they've gone all white and pale and limp. And I thought they're not doing the plant any good, so I chopped them off. Obviously that was probably a rash decision. They probably wouldn't have recovered, but they 
might have still benefited the plant somewhat and by getting rid of them I've stunted the plant even more um, yeah the thing the ones that were fine are my dwarf tomatoes the ones I sowed back in February so they have been they're much larger much more developed they have proper leaves and they're able to withstand that sort of the sun and all that so yeah so they're fine they're absolutely fine they're in their forever pots now I think and I have three of them one of them actually the growing tip got damaged I think because it was stood by the window and when you reach over them to open and close the window when you cook in you know I think one of them got damaged but it's already branching out so I think it should be all right it is a it's a it's a bush variety anyway so it should be all right but it's a bit annoying <laughs> more than anything but yeah I'll see if I can bear it to film what my tomato seedlings look like right now Anyway, I've got the new set of tomatoes popping up now. They're a bit slower, I would say. Slower to germinate than the first lot, which is surprising. Maybe it's because we don't have the heating on as much now. So they're under less heat. It's potenti potentially what it is. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about um, the Tombola tomatoes. So there's like seeds that were gifted to me by... Um, gifted were sent to me by a fellow instagram grower and she got uh i don't know if she bought the packet or if she got sent it by the company but it's basically um a tombola of tomatoes it's a seeds from all the varieties that they have and she shared them out to lots of us and we're all growing them and i've got six seeds three of them have germinated so far and you don't know what they're gonna be like they could be anything in their whole catalog and they have crazy tomatoes so that's pretty cool <laughs> so we have a local uh, B&Q which is a, a DIY store here in the UK and um, they've just they just opened a new shop in Oxford I think it will if it was right before the pandemic or just when it started so they never actually opened fully at the time and anyway they're running a 15% off a thing now and I've been resisting going but I had to go because I needed some uh, koya like um, like can you see what that is like liner for like um, these tra these uh, hanging baskets right uh, and I also needed a strimmer needed to buy my electric strimmer so I've done that now my cordless strimmer and I it was like the only one there and I thought well 15% off you can't go wrong with that so I went uh, sadly there wasn't much choice but I've tried it it's good and I'm happy it's another Bosch one which is what I've had before but this is the style or the model up so it's a bit more expensive than the one so I think previously I just bought the cheapest one which is like 40 50 quid this one is 110 so it is quite good actually it has like an um the string that comes out of it automatically so you don't have to readjust it oh there you go here it is <laughs> yes very exciting it has this like so you can t tilt the head and do the edges because that's you know that's what i use it for i don't need a petrol one because I don't do large areas what I use it for is detailing and having a, a light one like that it's only like just over two kilos in weight and it's still heavy <laughs> when you do a lot of it but it, you know it's it's good enough I think so I promise <laughs> myself not to leave it out in the rain again um, so I don't have to buy another one that would be great so my uh, sweet peas right they have been suffering they have been suffering a lot. They were sown in October last year and they germinated great, much better than my spring sown have been from the same seeds. And they grew so good through winter and I, uh, I cut them back and they bushed out and you know, and I've, they've been wanting to go out for ages, but I just have not been able to plan out where things are gonna go I'm not a planner right I don't have a drawn out map of my allotment and um, where I put everything in that I'm gonna plant out right I don't do that I just grow sort of how many of each I think I'm gonna want in the year um, 
obviously gone overboard with the tomatoes, but still, um, you know, I grow as many courgette plants as I think I'm gonna eat from and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I, then I sort of just squeeze it in because I have so much space. So it's not really a method I recommend for everyone, especially if you have a smaller space, you should, tr should try to be more effective and plan ahead rather than doing it the way I do. And I have been running into trouble this week. I've been feeling paralyzed by not knowing where to put things in case I put them in the wrong place. So I feel like I'd already forgotten that I'm growing four types of corn and I was going to place them in the four different corners of the plot that's far away from each other so that they don't cross pollinate, right? But I've already forgotten about that when I planted out my potatoes, for example. So they're taking up that space that I was planning to put some of them and the peas are using up another space. So that's really, really stupid of me. Um, but it's nothing I can do about that now. Uh, I'll just have to go ahead. But it's been it's been paralyzing me. So I haven't actually managed to plant out my sweet peas forever, uh, and I still have the brassicas and the spinach still to plant out, and they're really not happy in their modules anymore. So the plan for the sweet peas were to obviously grow up and. I use these structures that are, I think, old cloches. Um, they're cast iron, so they're all rusty, and the sweet peas, or peas, would love climbing up them because they can grip onto that. Don't try to grow sweet peas off bamboo because it's too slippy and they just slide off. Like, proper branches or uh, something with more tactile that they can cling to works much better. Or netting. They love netting and um or you can buy like ute string netting or you can make your own of course uh, but they also love that sort of stuff anyway so the plan was to have them grow up the tomato structure which i'm gonna build out of these um cloches put on end uh, and then have bamboo across the top and then string the tomatoes up there so so the sweet peas is going to be on the sides there but that meant i had to decide where the tomatoes were going to go and my god, so I've been I've been umming and ahhing and umming and ahhing forever and I finally decided on okay, I just have to do it. I just I just gotta do it. So I did it. <laughs> I did it finally. Um I think it's gonna be good, but I realised it's not gonna be enough space for my tomatoes, so I'm gonna have to have to make more space outside for tomatoes. I can't grow too many in the garden, I think, because my partner will go crazy. <laughs> uh Though I am going to try to squeeze in as many as possible, of course, that's a given. So I'm going to have to make more space. And I'm also growing, you know, 13 varieties of winter squash, <laughs> so they take up a lot of space as well. So my plan, my, my genius plan, is to, you know, the paths, the grassy paths I have between my beds. I'm going to plant them, the squash, there meaning I can open up space in the beds for the tomatoes. So squash quite gladly go, grow through holes in black mulch plastic. So if you're, if you're starting no dig your first year and you still want to grow stuff while using the black plastic mulch, one option is potatoes. You just make a slit in the plastic and pop a potato in. Or you can put squash or, or courgettes or something like that in as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I will need to, because I didn't mulch with a lot of organic matter underneath there, I'm going to have to lift it up, put in lots of good uh, manure or compost there and plant into there. But then they can grow out on top of the plastic. So that like immediately doubles my space. <laughs> so that's, I had a, that was a, such a great idea. I think it came to me when I was sleeping. So uh, those are the best ideas. But yeah, so that means I can squeeze in more tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> but yes, so because I finally bit the bullet, I could plant out my poor, poor sweet peas. I've probably planted them too close to each other, but I'm thinking I want this like magnificent, just like whoo, cloud of sweet peas. And I've mixed in all my colors. I was planning on having them separate, but I was like, no, I'm just gonna go for it. It's gonna be great. So there's two really dark ones and one really, two really light ones. And then 
a few mixes, two mixes as well. So I think it's going to be good. It's going to look fantastic. It just means that I'm going to have to feed them more uh, this year, which I'm totally fine with doing. And it's quite close to um, where I can get water from. So that's excellent. And um, yeah, one thing I'm going to try this year is to use uh, human wee for feeding your sweet peas. Apparently they love it. So you just take your urine from your partner because it's just easier for men's to do, men to do that and you dilute it obviously um, and you don't have to feed them with anything else and they absolutely love it so I'm gonna try that and I'll let you know how we get on <laughs> but yeah I just want to say as well another thing I bought in B&Q are these um, slate plant labels and I mean, they're just amazing. I think they're three pounds for five and then you get a pen. So I'm gonna use these for my dahlias. So I wanna label them properly so I can, so I know which one's which, right? Because dahlia tubers all look the same, right? Um, and it, then if I want to move them, then I know exactly where where to do that or <laughs> which one to dig out. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm digging them all out in winter. I'm still waiting for my neighbors who didn't cover theirs up, didn't mulch them, didn't dig them up. If theirs come up, I'm definitely not digging mine up. I can tell you that. And uh, I know a lot of people have started their dahlias already. It's not too late. You can even plant them direct in May. So don't stress about it. I'm not stressing about it, though I'm gonna try and pop, pop, them, in, pop them in pots next week and we'll see how we get on and I'm hoping to do um, a video just unboxing and talking through what varieties I'm growing and then just how to pot them up it's very straightforward but yeah I'm really excited about these um, and if you have a B and Q nearby <laughs> you should definitely look into these for like maybe not for vegetables um, but for like you know nice things that you want to organize in your garden I don't know I think dahlias work really great with these I'm so happy I managed to plant out the sweet peas. I'm so excited for what they're gonna look like. And yes, next week is gonna be great. I'm gonna get so much done. Oh, Have a great weekend, guys.